So it was a Macram, you've won the toss, what are you going to do? Uh, via, via belly. Macram, three fine seamers, plus the leg spin of Mushtaq Ahmed. Inzaman al Haq will set the world alight. And uh, there is the UAE team. Interesting to see the Sultans just slipping down the order a bit now as the competition progresses. Uh, record for Akram, 194 matches, plenty of experience, 282 wickets. And the economy rate 3.76, average 22.27, and the first ball of the match. Outside the off stump, and it's through. Just a bit of movement as it went through to the keeper, Rashid Latif. Well, that's the thing to look for in the Pakistani seam attack, really, is the movement they get in the air. And it's throughout the innings as well, with the new ball, able to see... Uh, was a Macron move the ball both ways into the right hander and away towards the slip cordon. That's a full talk in the field. That uh, moved a little in the air, an appeal by Akram, and uh, the umpire says no. Well, this had to be very close indeed. Early work for Venkat from India, the umpire. Goodness me, whether that was just going to, it was angling back into the right hander, whether it was just going to miss leg stump, I think that was the only thing in the batsman, oh, really. Testing times for the UAE openers. No. That's a no ball. Akram turns around and he thought this time he almost had him. Once again, the movement. Uh, it's very clear that he's uh, using the atmosphere here with the cloud about to move the ball. Well, just overstepping. Not an economy rate. Well, he's a little bit more expensive than uh, was a Macram, his partner in crime at the other end. But look at that average, just 22 runs per wicket. And in he comes again. It's through him. The away swinger through to the keeper, Rashid Latif. Well, the UAE opener's not getting uh, much respite here, are they? Look at that. That's a magnificent delivery. Look at the late movement. So three for no wicket after two overs, Salim Raza on one, two extras and Ganesh uh, yet to get off the mark, it'll be Salim facing. Inside edge, it's going to be four runs, that must have missed the off stump, uh, it must have gone pretty close to it as he got the inside edge, it's four runs, five for no wicket. Well you need Six. a bit of luck, early on in the piece and Salim Raza does get a bit of luck here, look at this, the perfect French cut, it's very hard to set a field for that, the length is good, and they need uh, all the boundaries they can get early on, the UAE batsman, remember just the 33 overs. And that's a lovely shot, it's going to be six, and it is, beautiful shot, and Akram's greatness holds no fear for him, away it goes, beautiful shot, Six more to UAE, 13 for no wicket. Well, this has gone a million miles, I can assure you. It's gone out of the ground. Some square of the wicket. Mukhar Yunus now to Ganesh. And they go through for one. That could be a run out if it's a direct hit. And the ball misses the stumps. Amir Sohail not hitting the stumps. That would have been very, very close indeed. Well, there's a lot more urgency in the 33 over contest and we've seen that already in both the batting, the bowling and now the fielding. A real mix up between the wickets. He was dead if this was straight from Amir Sahal. A good four or five metres short, but not quite on target. And two. Beautiful delivery. Beautiful delivery and very, very quick too. Waka Yunus. I mean, he's really at the top of his game. He's amongst the quickest in the world up there with Alan Donald. And really, that did climb. Look at the carry through to the wicketkeeper. Firmly focused on the target. And that did the batsman there, Garnish, beat him for pace. So that's Akib Javed's career, 122 matches and 134 wickets. Well, that's a fine shot. And it's going to be four runs. That's not the prettiest shot in the world, but uh, one of the most effective. If you can get it back past the bowler, then you're going to be in business. And this ended up being very straight. Not your classic straight drive off the back foot there. Stand and deliver stuff, really. Almost into the baseball stance. But uh, look at the timing there. And once it got past Javid Mandad there at mid-on, it was gone.
27 for no wicket and uh, Raza now looking uh, ominous from the Pakistan point of view this figure 7 for 37 against India and Sharjah the best bowling figures in all one day international cricket and that's up in the air there is a fielder which is Javed Nirav getting underrated he's caught it so the first wicket is down Javed Nirav comes back into the Pakistan side with some action, taking the catch, 27 for one, and Raza is out. Well, it wouldn't be Javed me and Dad if he didn't get into the action quickly. Good bit of captaincy here too. Bought fine leg up, dropped Javed me and Dad back at mid on. He went all the way back. He had to come in to take the catch, but old Javed, he's pretty cunning and he sized it up very quickly. And there was never a problem there, taken very comfortably indeed. So that bright and breezy innings from Raza is over. He's gone for 22. It's 27 for one had been the aggressor and looking to repeat the shot down the ground but this time he got underneath it good captaincy resulted in a man being down there that man was Javid me and dad he made no mistake and he's on the score sheet didn't take him long if he no let's watch it again that one lifted a little and dabbed down to square leg Ganesh gets one, 28 for one. But it's very difficult to keep Javed out of uh, action for long. Player of great class. One of the great entertainers the game has seen. Great opponent to Ifti over the years. Uh, enjoyed some great moments against New Zealand. That's for sure, Javed Mandad. But against all sides around the world, in all countries too. And I think that what is what makes Javed Mandad such a great player. He has performed well in all conditions. He's been the backbone of the Pakistan batting effort for a number of years. Fantastic record and never short of a word. Good competitor. Played to extra cover and that could be a run out. But uh, the return not very good. And Rashid Latif slips. And the batsman is home. Well, he's under pressure, Garnish. He knows he's got to get on with it. He knows he needs to keep the score ticking over. And so he tries to take a risky run here just to the left of Mushtaq Ahmed. He's a good fielder. And this occasion, just the throw wasn't quite on target. Fielder, which is in the mom, and it's four runs. 33 for one after eight overs. I just had it confirmed that it's 83 kilometers from Lahore. Oh, he takes off. Now he'll have to get back quickly. Oh dear. Sally Malik had a shot. And I'm not so sure that he would have made it back in time. Let's have a look. There have been a few mix-ups this morning already. And uh, Sally Malik quick. Well, I think he might have been well and truly short by at least a metre. But the understanding uh, between these two batsmen and, uh, and Raza was out there as well. Left something to be desired. They could easily have lost two or three wickets. From the semi-final against New Zealand back in 92. 60 runs and 37 deliveries. Man of the match. Wonderful performance. He's going to be out, out by a mile. Another misunderstanding and the dismissal of Azhar Saeed. I guess you could say it was always coming and it finally happened. And the crowd too are very excited and I'm sure the Pakistani side is as well. Just the second wicket down now for the United Arab Emirates. Total misunderstanding. Just pushed out there on the offside really into the covers. Uh, came down the wicket, got sent back, and he's left in no man's land. And Rashid Latif, well, he demolished that uh, wicket there. And the batsman there, Saeed, he's not very happy about that, and quite rightly so too. So he's been run out for one, and it's now 40 for two. Shortly, 33 over match, remember, this is the 12th. Now here is the dismissal of the left-hander. Well, Wasim Akram, he'll be pleased with this because the Pakistan fielding performance left a lot to be desired in Australia and New Zealand and he led from the front there himself and he did say to me before the game started 
that Pakistan have worked very hard on their fielding in the last few months to prepare for this World Cup and they've done the job pretty well today new batsman immediately down the pitch using his feet well to Mushtaq Ahmed and gets a single a bit of pressure going on the batsman as well with the man coming in close there uh, in the bat pad position that was Ijaz obviously looking to get an early wicket there and 41 for two Pakistan have done it pretty well and that the United Arab Emirates batsmen have to get runs quickly they need to get a score to be competitive oh well, there's the wrong one. it's a beauty too a loud appeal from the bowler not supported by anybody else it's 41 for two on that, but certainly got 100 and then a Karachi 206 and big uh, Richard Collins a left arm seam up but hit straight back over his head into the and over the side screen for six that uh, Karachi test match New Zealand were able to draw that one although the Gaddafi Stadium Lahore we lost it in convincing fashion Hold him. beautiful delivery from Mustak UAE slump to 47 for three. Well, it needed one of the batsmen to try and get hold of Mustak Ahmed. Looked to be the googly, really. And that is Mustak Ahmed's 100 wicket. And he got it up in the air. Yes, certainly, certainly came back the other way. Middle stump goes. And so Ganesh is gone. He's been out there a long time, actually. 50 deliveries for his 13 runs. Needs to be quicker than that. It's now 47 for three. All right, well, let's go back to... Uh Pakistan, Mushtaq Ahmed has just claimed his 100th one-day wicket. The UAE are 47 for three. And uh, we've got one more ball of this 16th over to go. And here is the end of Ganesh. Huge wind and uh, comprehensively bowled by the googly. And that was the third wicket to go down. It was a somewhat agricultural shot, shall we say, Mark? Yes, I mean, he does bowl a lot of googlies, Mushtaq. He's actually quite hard to pick. And that one, basically, he's, just, he's obviously been tied down. He's, he hasn't scored for some time. He's had a horrible hack and he's missed it. <laughs> he's in for 50 balls for his 13, which really, in a, in a restricted game like this, really isn't quick enough. That's right. Now, this man uh, has got some runs in previous matches, so let's see whether he can do any better for the UAE. 47 for three. Down the wicket he comes, but... Uh... Amir Soil drops it just a little short and he has to play it quietly into the covers. He's not to, to be underestimated, uh, Amir Sahal. He's a pretty cagey left armer. Oh. That's the googly again. What a ball, He's already picked up the wicket with the googly. And almost again there, that must be very close to off stump. So they're having trouble picking Mustar Kamat, the UAE batsman. Quicker one, and he gets the outside edge. It's going to be four runs to the third man boundary. Javed Miadad will not cut it off. Four more to UAE, and that's their 50. They go on to 53 for three in 17.3 overs. So they're not big boundaries here, and uh, he can beat that man inside the circle, even with the pace from the spinners. It's going to race away. The outfield, I feel, is getting quicker now, I see, with the sunshine on it. Yeah. Out of the ground. Well, look out, Shane Warne. Look out, Anil Kumblay. Mustak Ahmed will not be underestimated in this tournament, and this is the reason why. Magnificent wrong and again, and this one takes Midland leg. Appreciable spin there. Absolutely no idea the batsman, and right on target. Back goes middle stump again. So the UAE are 53 for four. Let's watch it again. The googly turning a lot. single 54 for four and Pakistan now really in control of this uh, game Asad Mohammed three matches three innings 27 runs the line of off stump it's up in the air he could be out Crowd 
to their feet. Waka Yunus is the catcher. He was stationed down there at Long Off. And the good use of the feet here. He did get to the pitch of the ball, but he wasn't able to get the timing. I think the turn there just took it towards the outside edge of the bat. Didn't get full timing onto it. Lifted it down to Long Off. And there, Waka Yunus. Well, it's not copybook stuff, but it's effective. So, Mazar Hussain is on his way for seven. UAE 54 for five. A lot of talk about Shane Warne and Anil Kumble. Well, let's not forget Mushtaq Ahmed. He's been waiting for action here in Pakistan. He's delivered the goods straight away. It's another good wicket for him. Wakar Yunus eventually safe under the high ball. Here's the lofted shot. Mukhtar Yunus gets into the picture now, holds it and topples over. Oh, Nearly got through. That's Ashad Lake. Oh. Oh. Once through, he tried to chop that one down to third man. Through to the keeper who didn't take it too clean. Class fielding, they have been committed, Pakistan. That's a fine shot. It's going to be four runs to the extra cover boundary. And like showing that he doesn't have any fear of Mustaq. Beautiful shot there. Just a little bit of width there, and that enables Laik to place the ball just wide of Waka Yunus, who's down there in the deep at long off. He's able to hit it more over extra cover because of the width. Gets the front foot out there. It's turning away, and the timing is side field, and he's bowling to it. And the slash upish past the outstretched hand of Ijaz, and it's going to be four runs to the backward point boundary. 66 for five. He's not too happy, Amir Sahal. I think he thought uh, this was a chance. It was a slash, a little bit of whip, and almost a uh, great diving effort there from Ijaz Ahmed. He's been in the action in the field already. Look at the whip there, the full flurry. So plenty of action. We're all in favour of Pakistan at the moment. And that's up in the air. There's a fielder getting under it. And he's out caught by Ajaz. And up goes the crowd. One more wicket gone. 70 for six. Like out. So good delivery here. This is the one that leaves the right-hander. Bowling the in-swinger throughout the over. This one leaving the right-hander, not getting the timing to it. The end of the bat, ballooning away on the offside, and Ijaz Ahmed. He's as safe as a house underneath that. So Laik goes for nine. And the UAE now steps. About to start a new over. This is the wicket. Last ball previous over, Richard. Lakeep Javid, yes. Uh, very much on target. Coming back for his second spell. And uh, lots in there really getting under it. Ejaz did well because he had to go backwards to take that one. It was a well judged catch. Uh, very tight, Amir Sahail. This will be pleasing for Wasim Akram. The second spin is bowling well. Oh, that's just away from the fieldsman. Fell very awkwardly just in front and to the side of the Pakistani fieldsman and down to the fence for four. Sayed Anwar missed that one. And it was a short, quicker ball outside the off stump. Not a bad delivery. Basman gave himself a bit of room there. And that really is one of the few fielding blemishes we've seen in this innings. Yeah, the sand has been of a very high class indeed. So you don't worry, it's a little bit late on that one. Arm action at delivery. I think that's what deceives a lot of batsmen. The ball just gets through quicker than what they think. Oh, yeah. That's slow. And it's bowling. Beautifully bowled. Slow ball held back. Off the inside edge. And the off stump goes missing. World class. Absolutely superb bowling there from Wasi Makram. Quicker balls outside the off stump, slower balls. Really mixed it up and really did deceive the batsman there. 
Bradford up there. Bit of an inside edge that helped the ball onto the stumps. But really, I see Macrame has every reason to be pleased with that. So, Mohammed, he goes for 12, and the UAE now 80 for 7. That's out the time, I suppose. That must be a serious question now. Yes. And he's left the ball behind. Well, he's one of the uh, higher scorers, is Dickon Waller. And we see the dismissal of Mohammed again. An inside edge, change of pace there from the bowler, Wasi Makram. He's a master of that. It's nicely played, it's just away. Well, I thought he'd got a lot more on it, but in actual fact, it just lobbed down towards the 30 metre circle and very nearly was taken by the skipper. Well, the way they have fielded today, that catch could easily have stuck. So Wasim uh, Akram there, the captain, just missing out there. But Wakar just getting that ball to angle in late too. Good effort there from the captain. And he's led the side well today. The stroke play, it's also given all the bowlers some assistance. Over the top, well hit. Sali Malik has the chase. And he may struggle to get it. That's well played, four runs. Well, they've tried to play one or two positive shots, really, the UAE batsmen, but really they've found some difficulty with their timing in general terms, and sometimes the ball's gone in the air and just stopped dead, really. But 13 30th over now. That's high in the air. That's well hit. And the pitch is just inside the boundary. And Wasim does the fielding. So a couple of runs taken, and they really have to go for it now. Just four overs left. A bold shot, that just wasn't quite timed actually because there was too much height on it. And you're right in this way, this is the time when they've really got to go for everything. Just got under it and uh, the man that widened it off there was Wasi Macken, the captain. Chased it hard, just always out of his reach and the ball just about stopped dead. Field that did cause a bit of a problem. This is enormous hit. I think this is over the top. Yes it is, six more. That's a huge one. And that is a very rare sight as well. What a hit do you see the great man, Wokar Yunus. Get lofted for six on the leg side. He bowled it just short of the length, really, and he got picked up on the leg side. In fact, it was probably too short at this time of the innings, but even so, as soon as he's bowling the ball at around about 135 k's, it was well struck indeed. So Dick and Waller is the man that can hit the ball to and over the boundary, and uh, important runs there for a three-quarter run-up at the moment. That's still quick enough for most batsmen. Bowling. Spectacular. Middle stuff clean out of the ground. And Waka Yunus gets another wicket. And he's too fast. Amara Sakera. As he finds that middle stump cleanly knocked out of the ground. So that's the fast in swinging Yorker one suspects from Waka Yunus. Not too many guys are going to sort of handle that one. Again off the shorter run up, three quarter. Well, it was just dead straight. It didn't really do too much. Maybe a bit of an angle in. And Samara Sakera there just done for pace. So he goes 108 for eight. What odds would you give me for, for a first ball here then for the Sultan? Oh, it must be. Uh... Fairly a strong possibility, I'd have thought, if Wacker Eunice can get it in the right place. What do you think? I think if it's straight and full, he's out. Do you think he'll be backing away? He'll be giving himself a bit of room. Here we go then. 108 for 8, last ball of Wacker Eunice. And you get a single. Almost in slow motion, and so one run taken by the skipper. End of the over, it's 109 for 8. Nought in the first game against South Africa, followed by two against England. As we see Samara Sakera being completely castled here by an informed Waka Yunus. Well, and so Sultan Sarawani's innings comes to an end. He's hardly troubled the scorers today. He's picked up a single. And Wasi Makram, the great man. He's come back wonderfully well on this his second spell. Picked up a couple of wickets himself now. Again, right at the base of the off stump. So very full in delivery. And looks like he was done for pace, Sarawani. So he's gone. 109 for nine. And he gets a slower ball. And he wants a single. He's hardly troubled the scorers either in this competition today. Coming in at number 11. He's the wicketkeeper, actually. 
and there's not too many wicket keepers in world cricket that come in at number 11 I can assure you of that and <laughs> sorry, the score is too much today last ball of the innings and a maiden over to finish from Mossy Macram and uh, that is a tremendous bowling performance not only by the captain but by the whole of the Pakistan side and the United Arab Emirates finished their 33 overs at 109 for 9 33 overs, one or two lusty blows here and there, but all in all, Mark Island, it didn't really seem to be enough. No, not really. They didn't they didn't bat with any conviction at all, and the Pakistanis was far too superior with their bowling. There's the bowling figures. Some great work, especially by Mushtaq Ahmed, the leg spinner, three for 16 off his seven. The uh, UAE had no answer to him. Now then, over in Pakistan, Amir Sohail's about to start the ball rolling as far as the Pakistani batting campaign in this 1996 World Cup is concerned, let's go to Gujran Walla and our commentators. So he's got him away down to uh, the final boundary forearm. So a bright start by Pakistan and brings the crowd to their feet. Four to Pakistan, four for no wicket. Well, the man at fine leg is fairly square. There's not too much wrong with the delivery, really, because had uh, Sahail missed it, there might have been a very confident shot for an LBW. Might have been just fractionally missing the leg stump, but there we have Sahail. Wonderful performance that. 1750s, 300s, and a very healthy average, too, approaching the 33 mark. So he's got off to a good start. Pakistan have lost their first wicket at seven. Amir Sohail, clean bow. What a great start too for the United Arab Emirates side and for Sama Sakera. He came out there and got rid of Sahail. Just did a little bit too and uh, held its line. Just started to come back into the batsman and Sahail, I'm sure he's disappointed with that because he would have wanted to cash in out there as I'm sure Saeed Anwar and the others will want to do. But he's gone for five, beautifully bowled by Sama Sakera. So it's seven for one in the box to start. And this is why Ajaz is in. Beautifully bowled by Samar Sakira in his first over seam up. And it just started to angle in a little bit. Might have been a touch of pad that might have back past the bowler. And very few, if any, that went anywhere near mid-off or mid-on. So it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. I'm sure a lot of players around the world would have done their homework as far as the batting technique of one Ijaz Ahmed. That's short and uh, pulled to mid-wicket for him. Beautifully played. Positive start there for Ejaz, and like really dropping it too short. He's not quick enough on this pitch. He's going to drop it halfway down. He's going to get picked off, and that ball's going to go. Well, there it is, Ejaz, just behind the wicket again on the leg side. But he gets off the mark with a good boundary there, good positive shot. It's two no balls to date, seven extras in those 18 runs. So they need to tighten up. The concentration needs to be more focused. Ejaz, the batsman. Another wide down the leg side, and he's got his field on the off, and he's trying to... Crouches a little bit. That's outside the leg stump as well, so there's plenty of sticks, stumps for the bowlers to see. And that's going to be four. Richard was talking about the square cut, and there it is. The ball flashes past the fielder down to the point boundary for four. And he hit it well too, and he got over the top of it. And just given too much room outside the off stump. A little bit aerially for a starter. Oh boy, that man there at third man just didn't have a chance. Well, that was just a free hit, really. And uh, he just, just really laid into that. Uh, there's, there's a man there going to catch it. Well, there's a man, there's a deep gully. That's Sultan Zarawani. But there's a deep backward point as well. So they obviously have done circle at the moment. He's going to have to do well to catch something like that, I suspect. That went like a rocket. Full toss down the leg side and it's a wide. Not that I've seen him play, but it just goes to show that he can actually did it, do it and he uh, did it with some authority as well. 35 for one, Said Anwar now to face. That's down the leg side and that's another wide. And he's selected a coach. You've got a little bit of work to do in the nets, haven't you, in terms of the bowlers. You've got to get them some new balls available to them to bowl at practice so they get used to bowling with the new ball it's obvious so they're struggling in these conditions anyway to control the movement 
That's beautifully played. That's the most decisive shot we've seen from Saeed Anwar. And he hits it to the fence. Harrison well, certainly helped the old confidence. Nothing better than a nice straight drive down the ground on the up. Just lifted it a shade. But the placement was very good. And at last he's found a little bit of timing as well. Standing across the left-hander. That's beautifully stroked away. Fairly slow outfield. It might struggle to get there. But the batsman will have time for three. That really was a classic shot by Ejaz. Well, he can be quite a punishing player, Ejaz Ahmed. He's ideally suited coming in at number three. Just a little bit of width there onto the front foot. Good extension, good back lift. past the fieldsman that should go all the way well the man inside the circle had to stop it there was no cover well, Ishaq Mohammed is the guilty party here as the 50 partnership is brought up by the wide delivery Certainly getting some turn, but again he's very wide. And that's well played by Ejaz. And four runs. I think Richard Hadley pointed out earlier on that Ejaz Ahmed, because of his grip and his back lift and his style, was a good exponent of the flat back shots. Well, here is one of them, the cut shot. Secret to it is to be able to hit the ball down into the ground, keep it down so you don't run the risk of it. He said he didn't mind the short inversion. He thought his sloggers might uh, help them out a wee bit. That's wide again. But in the end, it's very hard to slog against some of the bowling of the calibre of Yunus and Akram, Mushtaq Ahmed, and uh, Akib Javid as well. It's a tough call on any lineup. Well, that might have been the wrong one. Looked as though it came back. Misfielding. And the misfielding has cost four runs. 13 overs gone, 77 for one. That's through the field. That's a lovely shot. And that's the over, 85 for one. 99 for one. And that's a six. Into the stand it goes. Sword hard and high. And into the stand. Brings the crowd to their feet. And he does. Brings the Pakistan 100 up. 105 for one. And he did it with some ease as well. Nice footwork. He just came from the pitch of the ball and just locked it that very simply over the long Partnership on 99, Ajaz on 49, four runs required for victory, and in 80 minutes and 108 balls, Pakistan have powered their way to 106. And just take the single, and a bit of misfielding again. Very convincing partnership that, and both batsmen say it unwire and EJ is able to play very well indeed. And EJ is just one short of his 50 now, and with only three runs required for victory, and he's in strike as the field comes in now to prevent the single. I suspect that EJ might like to do this in some sort of stop off. He plays it into the covers, and that's going to be his 50. He's out. And so is Saeed Anwar. A wave to the Pakistan balcony by Jaz and then to the crowd. And they are on their feet, waving the sixes and the four placards that they have. That's the 50. 
It's just a nicely controlled innings from Ezaz. A few boundaries in it. He's worked the ball back with a square and round the corner on both sides of the wicket. And uh, really did play well. Nice innings. And that's victory for Pakistan. It's gone for four over long on. 112 for one. In exactly 18 overs. And Pakistan have won by nine wickets heavy overnight rain and it also meant of course that uh, we didn't get too much rain by the way more racing coming up in just a moment or two a news uh, a racing news extra coming up at uh, 10 to 12. now there's the story of pakistan versus uae uae in 33 overs 109 for nine and pakistan made very short work of them 112 for one in 18.